In this section, we are going to dive deep into the concept of classes and interfaces. Now, the concept of classes might be not new to you because if you know JavaScript, especially ES6, then classes also exist there. However, if you are not completely aware about classes, don't worry. We are anyway going to learn about it in this lecture. Interface, however, is completely new feature which does not exist in JavaScript. It might get added to JavaScript in future versions, but currently they are not available there. But in TypeScript, we have interfaces and we will learn about them in great detail in this section. Now, before we talk about classes and interface, let's first understand what is an object-oriented programming. Because in order to understand classes and interface, it's important to understand what an object-oriented programming is. So, in an object-oriented programming, we define real-life entities in form of an object. For example, let's say we are building an e-commerce web application. In there, we will have a lot of entities like products, customers, orders, etc. Each of these entities can be represented using an object in object-oriented programming. If we take an example of customer entity, we might be having a list of customers. This list then have some properties and behaviors. For example, we can add a new customer to customer list or delete a customer or fetch customers. So all these are behavior of a customer list. We can also represent each customer in customer list using an object and that also will have some properties and behavior. So for example, properties of a customer can be the customer name, customer address, his email, etc. And behavior of customer object can be a method which allows customers to change his address or a method which returns us the full name of the customer based on his first name and last name. So behavior is nothing but a method which we define for an object. And these entities can also be related to each other in some way. For example, this customer list, which is again an object, is related to customer object because at the end, the customer list is going to have a list of customer objects. Then each customer might have made some order. So order is another entity which can be represented as an object and there can be a relation between a customer and some orders which he has made. Okay, so using object oriented programming, we basically represent the real world entities using objects. A customer can be an object, an order can be an object, a product can be an object. Each object will have some properties and methods. Property represents the state of the object and methods represent the behavior of the object. For example, an order object can have the order ID, items which was purchased in that order, date and time when that order was made, etc. And it can also have methods to calculate the total price of the order, adding discount, etc. In this example, this order one is an object. In this object, we have the order ID, items and date of purchase as its properties. And a property is nothing but a state. And this order one object also has this get price method and get discount method. So this is the behavior for that object. Using these methods, we execute some logic. We do something. So that's why method is also called as the behavior of that object. So in simple words, in an object oriented programming, we represent real world entities using an object. Each object represent one entity. In this example, this customer list object represents an entity and this entity contains a list of customers. In the second example, this customer one is an object which represents one single customer and that customer will have a name, he will have an email address, he will have a physical address and that customer can perform actions like changing his physical address or displaying his full name. In the same way, this order one is another object. It is an order object and an order can have an order ID, the items which was purchased in that order, date of purchase, and then it can also have behaviors like get price. So this order object will have a method which it will use to calculate the object based on number of items purchased and the price of each item. Then we can also have this method get discount 
using which the order object will calculate how much discount it has to provide on that order. So each entity is represented by an object in object oriented programming. Now let's say we have hundred of products which we are selling from our e-commerce application. And to represent these hundred products, we will have to create each product object one by one and specify each property and method for that product. So in this example here, you see, we are creating some product objects. So if we are selling hundred products from our application, we will have to use this object literal syntax and create those objects. And each object will have some properties like name, price, color, RAM, storage, etc. And it will also have some behavior, some methods. And using object literal syntax, we will have to create each object like this. Now, if we create each product individually and define its properties, we might miss to add some properties when creating these product objects, right? Also, each product is going to have some methods and the method definition will also remain same for each product. So the logic of the method is not going to change in each product. The logic, the definition of the method is going to remain same for each product. So we will also have to create the same method and define it for each product with the same definition. But if we have a way to create a blueprint for a product object where we can define what properties and methods a product should have when it is created and every product object should be created based on that blueprint, then we can avoid these issues. And it turns out we can do that using classes. A class is nothing but a blueprint based on which we create objects. For example, here we have a product class and this product class is going to act as a blueprint for the product object. The class will tell us what properties and methods an object should have when it is created from that class. In this example, when an object will be created from this product class, it should have a name property, a price property, a color property, and it should also have these two methods, calc discount and availability. So using this blueprint, using this product class, we can create as many products as we want. And there we will have all these properties and these methods, and we will also have a value for these properties. So for example, here, is an object, a product object, where the name of the product is iPhone 11, its price is 1900, color is black, and it also has these two methods, calc discount and availability. We have the second object, which we have created using this product class, this blueprint, and there also we have a product name, product price, color, and we have this method, calc discount and availability. In the same way, we are creating a third product here. There also we have a product name, product price, color, and these two methods, calc discount and availability. So based on this blueprint, we are creating these objects and we can create as many number of objects as we want based on a blueprint, based on a class. So in simple words, a class is nothing but a blueprint based on which we can create objects. And when we create an object from a class, that object is called as the instance of that class. And we can create multiple instances. That means we can create multiple objects from a class. All these instances will have the same properties and methods. Only the value of the properties will change. So in simple words, we can say that objects are the concrete data structure, which we actually work with. It has its properties with its own values and it has its own methods. So these objects, which you see here, it is the data. But a class is simply a blueprint based on which we create these objects and it helps us speed up the creation of objects. Now, if it is a little bit confusing, don't worry, you will learn what is a class and how to create objects from that class practically in the next lecture. For now, just understand that object is the data we work with and class is the creator using which we create this data. So this was a very high level overview of what is an object oriented programming and what is a class. In the next lecture, let's go ahead and let's create our very first class in TypeScript and we will create objects based on that class.